Hey guys, what's happening? So, got my pre printer in here, and it's a Biku, which is actually Big Tree Tech, same company. So, the customer says it's getting a printer halted, kill called. Every time I try to do a print, something I looked up might be a software issue. So, I mean, you're not going to get a lot of information from the color touchscreen. Um, well, actually, it's not a touchscreen. We'll plug it in, fire it up. That's where it's at. So, this actually has a big tree check. I think it's a TFT TFT 35. Um, but you have the graphical screen, which is not really interfacing with Marlin. Then you have the black and white screen. If you hold the button down, you can switch to the Marlin screen. And this will tell you, probably, this will be more informative, usually, of what the problem is. Like if it's the extruder, you know, E0, it's not getting feedback for the, from the thermistor. Um, or the hot end, you know, or the hot bed. You don't really know. Alright, so, so I'm just going to do some basic tricks on this thing first. I'm going to do a home. Home, auto home. It's going to home XYZ. Except, oh yeah, this, is, this doesn't have a probe, so it's going to... Um, there's going to be an end stop, a Z end stop. Alright. And then I'm going to manually heat up the, uh, okay, there's the end stop. I guess the end stop, it looks like it's probably in the, I don't know if it's in the carriage, I, I can't see it. Um, so once that's done, I'm going to go back here and do a temperature, do the nozzle. I'm going to bring this up to like 215. And what I want to do is I want to hear the fan come on too, the cooling fan. Well, it's already on. So depending on the actual board you have, um, so if the board uh, uses a controller pin, there's actually a pin on the that actually maps back to the processor, then you can control this, the cooling fan. So a lot of the, like, I think it was up to like the SKR, this is, this is a Big Tree Trek is the same company, so they actually have the SKR, I think it's like 1.3 or 1.4 in here. So the SKR 1.3 1.4 only has one control pin f for fan, and you typically mount it, you connect it to the, to the layer cooling. So this thing runs 24-7, but the newer boards have a dedicated pin going back to the processor so you can control this fan via pulse width modulation. I won't get too into details here. Let's go back to temperature, uh, nozzle, let's go 215. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. But, all right, let's try 215. So with a, with a modern one, um, the fan would only come on once you're uh, the cool thing about it, it's like the modern printers will actually turn off the MOSFET cooling fan. So like the driver cooling fan, the hot end cooling fan, the wall shut off. So when the print's done, it gets, the printer becomes really quiet. All the fans shut off. Alright, so I'm going to do a test of the hot end. Then I'm going to go back and do the bed. I mean, the RGB lighting is actually pretty cool in this printer. Um, actually, I fixed a couple of these printers. Um, I've actually fixed this printer before too. I actually did, did, had a broken end stop. I can't remember. I, I don't know if I ever uploaded the video about that one or not. Um, yeah, the cool thing is they have RGB lighting. So, um, uh, so when it's purple when it's heating up, and it's like light blue when it's heated up. So let's go down to uh, temperature and bed. Okay. Yeah. So. It's, when she tries to do a print, it goes to 60, which is like typical PLA. Getting a kill. But like I said, you're not going to get a lot of information from this color, typically. I mean, some of the time you do. Alright, I'll do... Uh, like I said, if it had a bad thermistor, you'd be, uh, it, would, it, would, it would fail. Let's get back to the main, see if it's doing anything. Yeah, the, the heat of bed is not doing anything here. See, it's not moving. It's still at 25 degrees. So... Make sure the temperature is bed. I'm surprised it hasn't aired out already. 
I mean, you think it would have aired out already. Yeah, because I should the MOSFET should be activated right now on the board, and power should be sent to the board. So I'm going to flip this over, open it up, and see if I'm actually getting any sort of output voltage from the uh, MOSFET. So I don't know if there's going to be an external MOSFET. This is a pretty small board or bed, so they might be using the internal bed MOSFET. Um, but like larger printer beds, you'd have an external MOSFET. You have the internal board MOSFET triggers the external MOSFET. All right. Um, no movement on the bed. See, requested 60 degrees and it's 25, but why did it not air out though? I mean, it should have aired out already. Let me see if I can go. Okay, there it goes. Yeah, see that right there, printer hollow bed failed. Okay, so you didn't get this sort of information from the other screen, as far as I can tell. That's why I have it here in Marlin. But that took a long time to fail though. I mean, usually have it set faster than that. All right, so that makes me, I feel like there's, I mean, just, um, it's making me think I'm not getting power to bed. Um, because the thermistor shows, if it was a dead thermistor, you'd probably see zero reading. But I'm seeing 25. So my guess is the bed is not getting power. You know, it's really common for um, these wires to go bad because they're moving all the time. So eventually they became they become frayed internally. Um, so I mean these things it's pretty common for these these things to break too. So um, all right, so I'm gonna go to the bed, unplug it, and pull the cover off. All right, so here is the thing turned over, and here's the main board. So they are running the internal MOSFET out of the board. So there's um, I don't know if you can see it, but somewhere maybe there. Um, there's a couple of moss wherever the hot end is. I fixed with quite a few of these boards. Replace moss that's the boards. Um, so um, here's some, here's like where it comes out of the board. You know, it's, this is most likely a 24 volt setup here. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a continuity test. I mean, a couple different ways you could you could you could test for voltage here, but I want to test the wires to make sure the wires are fine first. Um, so typically what I do is I, I put my, uh, uh, I'll put my multimeter in continuity mode and then what I'll do is check for, move it around. So sometimes this can be intermittent, right? So depending on where you're on the board, um, you move the board back around because some, like I said, it's, it will show it's fine, right? But when you hit the brake, it, it, it loses power. So I've actually had, I've fixed many, many, uh, intermittent ones. So it's going to be hard for me to get this on camera. So I'm going to put one probe down here. And then I'm going to hit the other one on the ground. Right there. And then I'm going to switch it. I'm going to try to hit the positive if I can. I already know it works though. So, so. Alright, so I, I've figured out that the wires are fine. The wire is going from the main board to the motherboard. I mean the main board to the, to the heated bed. So the wires from here going up, and they double up the wires. So if you see the wires double up like that, that typically means they're trying to send more current. So there's two different ways you could do this. You could actually add thicker wire, or add two wires. All right, and all right. So I gotta heat this up. I'm hoping it's not the board MOSFET. Um, the thing that triggers it, uh, and that, so it's pretty common um, for this to go out. So. I've actually noticed a lot of these big tree tech boards of MOSFETs have started failing. Um, yeah, quality control has kind of gone down a little, a little bit. Yeah, I've been mean, having problems with my own Pico boards. The Clipper Pico boards. Alright, so I'm moving backwards. I'm moving from the heated bed going to the board. So the next test I would do is you know, heat up the bed again and I'm going to do a voltage test at the output. So if I'm not getting any voltage voltage here on the output, then I'm not going to get any heated bed action, you know. So this is actually triggered by a MOSFET. A MOSFET is basically an electrically controlled switch, kind of like a relay, but it's controlled. There's no moving parts internally. It's solid state. 
So the processor tells the MOSFET to turn on, right? Activates the gate, and then basically tells the MOSFET to turn on, and that's what sends voltage out here. All right, so the board actually is an SKRT board. All right, so I'm gonna actually hook up to 60 degrees here, and then um, see if uh, some of these boards actually will have an LED next to the MOSFET, so you can kind of see where it's at. Okay, so I'll see here as soon as I hit the button here. See if something turns on. Okay, see those lights come on? And then the fan came on. See that right there too? Fans came on. Those are like the MOSFET coolers. Um, at least the fans are told to turn on. I don't know if that's uh so let's check for voltage here. So I'm gonna check for voltage right here on the heat of bed. And I'm getting no voltage output. So right now I should be getting 24 volt output. And I'm getting that then. I haven't actually messed with a lot of these boards. I think I actually I think I have a failed board here, an SKR2 failed board here. Um, but I do see those two fuses here, so I don't know if one's an input fuse and one's like a heated bed output fuse. But I'm going to do a continuity test on those two fuses right there. Um, and obviously I know I'm getting input power, but I don't really know what, what fuse does what, so might as well check it. It is pretty close to the input. I mean, why would they have two fuses though? I don't know. Alright, so it actually is that fuse right there. Let me see if I can get that on camera. So I'm going to test it real fast. So I'm going to do a continuity test. Um, excuse me. Alright, so I'm going to do a continuity test. So a positive lead. Hear the beat. Continuity here, but I'm not getting continuity here. Alright, I should be getting continuity here. So here's what a good fuse sounds like right here. So I'm not getting continuity here. So, I mean, I'm hoping it's just a bad fuse and something else didn't trigger it. But I know the leads are fine, so... Um, Alright, so I don't know if I have any more of these fuses left. Uh, um, so I don't actually uh, know if Big Tree Tech got a bad batch of fuses or something. Because I actually had just replaced a fuse like this two days ago. Um, you know, in my own printer. And before that, I've never once blown a fuse in an SKR board. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. Alright, so I just got some fuses in from Amazon. I think these were like eight bucks. One day delivery. So if you're wondering, these fuses are called uh, 1808 fuses. Uh, these are 15 amps. I didn't see any 20 amps. I was going to try to order some 20 amps, but I couldn't find any, so... I mean, I saw like fives and fives and tens, but all right. So what's interesting about this board is you don't normally. It's pretty rare that you'd actually have a dedicated fuse for the actual uh, the heat of bed output. Usually there's, there's just one fuse for the input. Um, all right, get the fuse in. See if this actually fixes the issue. So if this doesn't actually so again power on, and I'm gonna go up to 60. I mean, I should see a temperature change pretty fast. See, so temperature, bed, sorry, well, the thing's obviously on the side, so you're not going to see it in the, straight in the camera the angle. 60 is, uh, usually depending on the size of the bed. Uh, bed, 60, go home, main. Oh, there it goes, so it's moving. Alright, that was cool. That's an easy fix. At least I don't have to replace the board. Alright, we're going up. Alright, so I'm just going to stop it and then I'm going to go back. Because I know that fixed the issue. I don't have to go all the way up. Because what I want to do is um, do a test print, make sure everything works before I give it back to them. 
you know, over the years, they actually have improved these color touch screens. Like, when they first come, came out, man, they were, you couldn't do anything with them, you know? Um, at least now they have baby stepping and, and other things, but, yeah, without baby stepping, it's, it's, it's pointless. You know, you need to be able to adjust your Z offset. Um, all right, it's heating up. Hey, it looks like the Z is already dialed in perfectly. I didn't even touch anything, so. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I adjusted this last time, so. Yeah, I went through, like, I did, I mean, I hate when they're in the manual, but I, I did the manual. I mean, I can actually just do this by eyeball. <laughs> I've done it so many times. Um, I mean, obviously, I would prefer the probe and fix, fix bed, but. All right, that's perfect get from the get-go. Yeah, I can just tell, like, the bed is level. Um, like, there's no probe to compensate for bed unevenness, so you have to have these springs dialed in here, the adjusters. So if you guys are new to 3D printing, um, the reason why I print out a calibration cube, so it's a 20 by 20 by 20 cube with like letters on it, X, Y, and Z, but it allows me to check, I mean usually these stock printers are fine, but I hook my calipers up to them and I can ch check the cube to see, make sure it's 20 by 20 millimeter. So if it's not exactly 20 by 20 millimeter, then I know the E steps, the amount of steps it has to go isn't correct, so I, I can usually modify that a little bit. Um, also, I like to look for ghosting, so like, uh, it's not, it's mainly on custom printers, but, um, you know, the jerk settings, acceleration, what I'm looking for is like ghosting in the letters, you know, like a double pattern. Alright, there it is. Looks pretty good. Yeah, I can't remember if this has 2208 or 2209 drivers. Um, but... All right, yeah, I mean, actually, I think it's out of choice. They're about the same price. The Ender 3 or the Big Tree Tech Biku B1, I'd, I'd take the B1 for sure. Has better stuff, better specs. Um, all right, cool, another 3D printer fixed.